right, Pickle. Let's start with some headlines. We've got headlines from across the state of Texas uh, to get into. And we will start with a um, – this was, a, this was a, a story that kind of popped on our radar a little bit earlier this w- last week. Mm-hmm. Um, we had heard some rumblings. Um, that Steve Sarkeesian was interested in adding a high school football coach to his staff there at the University of Texas. Um, and we had heard some rumblings of who it might be, but obviously you can't confirm things and, and, and you know, you got to make sure things go through there. Uh, but we ended up uh, getting word late last week that uh, Lancaster is coming open as the head coach of the Lancaster Tigers. Uh, it is coach Chris Gilbert is leaving South Dallas to head to Austin to become their director of high school relations down there on Steve Sarkeesian's staff. Of, co- co- of course, uh, coach, uh, coach Gilbert has been at Lancaster for a long time and led them to a state championship game uh, back in the earlier part of the last decade. Um, a consistent winner there. Uh, furthermore, the other, the other thing I'll say is that this is a guy who is uh, pretty – unanimously like beloved and respected in Texas high school football ranks. Uh, A guy who I know has been a muckety muck for lack of a better word on the THSCA board. Mm -hmm. Um, A guy who has very, very deep connections to Texas high school football coaches. So this strikes me. Uh, My initial thought when I heard this was that this reminds me a lot of when Baylor hired uh, Joey McGuire from Cedar Hill. Um, bringing in a guy. Now, this is an off-field role as opposed to they brought in Coach McGuire for an on-field role. But in a lot of ways, if anything, it kind of reminds me of um, they, when they hired David Wetzel uh, also, who was there in San Antonio. He kind of took over what is now the role of director of high school relations there at Baylor. And that role brought him in. This reminds me a lot of that. Um, a guy who is obviously is, is a successful head coach in his own right. Uh, mm-hmm. Successful, good, uh, a great football mind, uh, and a good program builder, uh, but also a guy who has those relationships that college coaches really value. And so, as a result, uh, a really, really big pickup there, I would say, for the um, for the Texas Longhorns, they grab uh, uh, Chris Gilbert from Lancaster. I will I also think- say that I think that Lank, go ahead. I think that the biggest thing, like you said, is not only do they have the respect of the high school football community through the administration, through the other coaches, the thing that makes Chris Gilbert and Joey McGuire so similar is you can see the clear love the players have for them. It's not only that they love their players, but those guys have so much respect for them that it, it makes perfect sense. I thought this was a fantastic big hire. Yeah. I was very savvy hire there by, um, by Steve Sarkeesian to bring on Chris Gilbert. I will also say that I think that Lancaster is going to be an interesting job and a job to keep an eye on. I think that there are going to be a lot of people who are um, who are interested in that job. So keep an eye on that on Lancaster. Uh, but that is now open as Chris Gilbert is leaving to go be the director of high school relations at the University of Texas. Uh, let's go to the other side of the Lone Star rivalry and talk a little bit about Texas A&M. Uh, we will be remiss. We'll probably get into this. I don't. I don't script out uh, this week in recruiting. That's uh, that's Greg Powers' job. Mm-hmm. But we will be remiss if we didn't talk about the heater that Texas A and M recruiting is on. Uh, they have been um, they have been really really red hot lately, uh, especially both in the class of 2021, I believe, as well as uh, the class of 2022. Um, they they added in a few guys like uh, Jameer Johnson, uh, the mm-hmm. the tackle transfer from Tennessee. He's coming in, but but over the past couple of days and, and, and really the past week, they've landed a commitment uh, from Connor Wigman, uh, the quarterback at Bridgeland. Uh, it's a, a four-star guy. I haven't checked our DCTF Hot 100 right yet, but a guy who I, I would presume is very highly rated uh, there. He's a guy that, that I think is really you know rising up the recruiting charts, but they, they get uh, Connor Wigman, the quarterback there. Uh, they also get a commitment from uh, Hunter Erb, the uh, tackle from uh, Northwest Eaton. Eaton, from Hazlitt Eaton. Um, so big get for them. Uh, but uh, recruiting, keeping on a and they've been on a recruiting heater lately. Uh, I'll be remiss. We'll probably get more into that on Wednesday when we talk with Greg Powers. 
uh, for all things recruiting. And this was recruiting, but I wanted to, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't mention that, but the big time get there. The so, other thing yeah. that we talked about um, on our recruiting special the other day when it came to A&M was this was, the, we know Jimbo's great at recruiting anyway, but this was the perfect time for them to strike the iron because I compared it to, if you look at LSU after they won the national championship, recruits started coming left and right. And it was mm-hmm. like, then they had a down year, they're all falling out. So it's like, A&M has that shot Mm -hmm. next year to really go into that next threshold, as we called it. And this was the perfect time for them to be getting recruits like this. It's been it's been a really, really good stretch here from basically since National Signing Day Mm -hmm. uh, for Texas A&M. And so it's a really nice uh, stretch here recruiting wise for the Aggies. Uh, We actually had pickle (laughs) college football this weekend in Texas. Uh, Texas teams, uh, we remember a number of teams, um, in fact, you know, most teams decided to bump their football to the spring, and that started this week. Now, now a lot, a few more start next week. I think Tarleton plays, I think we'll have the first FCS game of the spring next week uh, when Tarleton plays. But we had a number of Division three games, including uh, McMurray beats uh, Sol Ross State 17-14, first win for the coach there. Uh, Texas Lutheran. Uh, the thriller of the week was Texas Lutheran over Howard Payne, 39-38. Um, uh, as they get uh, – Seth Cosma, their quarterback, runs for a touchdown uh, in the final two minutes uh, to pull them within one. They decide to go for two and the win, and Cosma runs in for the score, uh, mm-hmm. and, and they get a 39-38 win over Howard Payne. Uh, Trinity takes down Austin High – or I'm Austin, I'm sorry, Austin College, uh, back in the high school football world, uh, 35-24. Uh, 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 East Texas Baptist takes down Southwestern, 28-17. Uh, and um, also, uh, Mary Harden Baylor is doing Mary Harden Baylor things. Uh, they beat uh, Bellhaven 41 to nothing in emphatic fashion. So yeah, we actually have college football. We're going to try to get our college football insider, Corey Hogue, on the show later this week. We were supposed to uh the, you know full disclosure we were supposed to have him on thursday the thursday show obviously did not happen but uh yeah so we we're going to try to reschedule him for this week to talk a little bit of uh small school call or small college football across the state of texas for the spring so there's that and then one last story pickle from the weekend and this was another story we had kind of got uh caught wind of uh about a week ago uh but um We've got a we've got a a major a major star in the high school football world who who's leaving us. Uh, you may remember uh, Marco Regalado, page who 12. was the. I'm sorry. I said page twelve. He's our page twelve yeah, guy page 12. in the magazine. <laughs> page twelve. Page twelve of the magazine. Uh, he was the assistant coach who went viral over the summer on TikTok, mm-hmm. doing all these like coaching impressions and things like that uh he went um he was going viral and stuff like that he left i believe he was at psja southwest yes the green one the wolves that sounds right uh he left there to go to hazlitt eaton he moved from the rio grand valley to the dfw metroplex he spent a year on the staff at hazlitt eaton and he's on the move again this time out of the state of texas and out of high school football uh, he is going to join the staff at Washington State uh, as uh, part of their, uh, I believe, part of their recruiting, uh, you know, group. Obviously, you know, Washington State, like uh, like uh, like most co- uh, programs, wants to make inroads in the state of Texas. Um, and uh, Nick Rolovich, their their off, their their coach, uh, decided to to call a guy here in the state of Texas that uh, that he had seen, that he had seen, and so uh, yeah. Uh, Marco Regalado is is leaving uh, the state of Texas to go be uh, uh, on the staff at Washington State. Uh, congratulations to him. That's uh, that's a, a remarkable a remarkable rise there in the past. It's been a pretty crazy thirteen months for him, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, congratulations to Coach Regalado uh, as he is. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly miss him desperately here in the state of Texas, but uh, but happy for him uh, to find uh, find his way up into the college ranks joining the staff there at Washington State. So uh, something to keep an eye on there. Yeah, so it's very, very cool for that's, him. Uh, that's, not a, that's, not a, that's not a move I've heard a lot of is a uh, high school assistant coach to college staff. But uh, I suppose it happens. But it yeah. happened here. So congratulations to Coach Ruckelotto. 